I started cutting some silicon rings to do some testing. And I was doing it because of a shower screen. I was taking a machine to Italy and the shower screen uh, couldn't be removed or couldn't be replaced with the other one I had from IMS. So I decided to make a silicon ring to see if I could provide the same effect. And uh, I pulled some shots with the ring on the decent espresso and I got this shot, which is clearly channeled down the center. There's not much extraction from the sides. And I started thinking about what that means for how water moves. Because this uh, decent has a modification with a silicon ring uh, right above the shower screen, while this silicon ring is right below the shower screen. So there's something happening with the water at the shower screen that a metal shower screen does not do but a silicon ring could potentially do. And I wanted to investigate that. So uh, one of the things I found though, is that when the water is coming down the column of coffee, it actually maintains the shape pretty well. Um, so I did some other weird shapes and as the water came through, it didn't spread out as quickly as I thought it would to other sections. Um, which to me says a lot about like the way I think of coffee or water traveling through coffee. Because previously I thought of it as water comes into the puck and then spreads out um, horizontally as well as vertically. And I don't think that's the case anymore. I do think it's the case on the top of the puck though. I do think water is spreading out on the top and that these silicon rings in, in some capacity stop the water from spreading out on the top and going to the sides of the coffee. So in that case, I think this is this hack is useful to explore reducing um, side channeling. Um, but this didn't quite work. Um, this first one didn't quite work. Uh, but I did a couple more iterations because I wanted to know. And I wanted to be able to use this other espresso machine that I was carrying um, to the same capacity as I did before. So um, when I took off the ring, there, it was, there was a, a little bump in the shape um, because it was pressed up against there. And um, so I did a bit wider of a ring and it, it did a little bit better. Um, sorry, I didn't clean off the filter beforehand. I, I was just excited about um, this messing around with this and being able to really cut off side channeling that I... Um, didn't clean the filter for the second shot. So I was also measuring extraction yield and, and I have a um, I have some data coming for extraction yield, but I was able to find a size of the ring that um, made uh, for a good good extraction yield or better extraction yield slightly than than without it. So I started making the opening uh, wider. I, I ended up with four widths. And uh, that allowed the copy to come in a little bit more centered rather than the side. So I, I, one of the challenges is the water already comes in the decent from um, the side. And even with my modification, it still doesn't quite fix it all the way. Um, but I use a, uh, a ramp bloom. So I ramp up to a, a flow rate, usually one milliliter per second. Then I hold that flow rate until the... Uh, bottom of the filter covers and then I, I have a plume for 30 seconds and then I do a uh, 0.5 to 1 milliliter per second uh, infusion. Um, I also used um, thermal pre-infusion for all of these. So five minutes of thermal pre-infusion. Um, and so uh, the, the color on these is really dark. The extraction yields uh, bumped up a little bit and I was able to find an optimal uh, point of, of um, the size of this ring, which happens to be just a little bit uh, wider than, or at the very edge of the shower screen itself. Um, so I think it really is blocking water from side channeling. This next, this is the best one. And I tried a couple variations to try to better understand, um, but this turned out to be the best one. Um, and, and sometimes one that's a, a little bit more closed circle helps for the Kim Express because of 
like the the Kim Express, the the shower screen doesn't sit entirely flush in the machine. So even with a restricted shower screen like I have, the the I have a little bit of water coming out of the side. So I've used a little bit wider of one for that. Um, so I, I cut these out on a sheet of silicone. I, I used um, uh, just a, a knife and a, um, I used a puck screen um, to, to cut out the different sizes. So I'd use a cut, cut puck screen to cut out the, the large size. And then I'd, um, I did a bunch of variations. So what's interesting about this one is you can really see the pattern on the bottom of the screen. So the, the pattern here is the star and it comes out like a star. Um, there's like a gap where it's it's clearly, there's flow not coming through. Um, and this uh, gets worse as the, I mean, not worse, but it, it continues um, throughout the shot. So um, we'll, we'll speed up the, the extraction just a little bit. And um, we still see this uh, coming through. We'll just jump to the end right here, and it's it's um, still in the star pattern, um, which means that the water came through, the water channeled through that way, and didn't and continued to go through that way after the fact. So this is even seen on the bottom of the the, the puck. There's these dark spots where water wasn't getting to at all. Um, so I tried another pattern, and this is somewhat similar to the. Um, star paper filter that I had used uh, a few months ago um, that's been very effective. So again, you see the, the patterns kind of coming through um, where you have these spots where it doesn't quite extract. And then we can, uh, this is the pre-infusion, we can just jump to the end. So we'll, we'll jump here to the end and this is, you still see a, a similar pattern as before. So I thought, what if we added uh, more stars on, more points on a star? And um, so I came up with this, which is kind of crazy. Um, but again, I see this pattern coming out where it, uh, there's still kind of a pattern. It's a little bit harder to see now, um, but it's still, it, it, it's still there. So I, I decided to do something even more wild. What about two rings? an inner ring and an outer ring, which kind of reminds me of the Wafo basket. I think it's like the four step basket where there's like some rings that block out how water comes through. Um, and it still, it, this one performed okay. It still wasn't as, as good as just the single ring, but I wanted to see how this was gonna come out. Um, let's get really crazy and do a spiral. So you think that the spiral is pretty thin and, and this should just come out all the way through, but it doesn't. There's still this pattern, which this is saying something really important, which is that water isn't redistributing at the top aside from going to the sides. And it's, uh, or at least it's not, definitely not redistributing inside the puck until you get to the bottom, until the, 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 filter covers, which means that if there's an unevenness at the start of water coming in, that unevenness will stay because you will have extracted coffee sooner from those areas and other areas, which means those areas will channel more than other areas. Um, so this goes back to what I've been talking about with water input that this is, this is a very important variable that, that we haven't been paying much attention to. And we end up with designs like the, the Gaja group head or the decent group head where you have water, you have an, uh, an uneven water input because they're relying on the pressure building up. And then once at that point, maybe it doesn't matter so much, but this transient is so important if you really wanna get even and high extraction.